I preached one sermon at St. Luke's United Methodist Church in Nicholas County, and then I was on my way to seminary. I had a church, it was social, in social circle, it was Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church. When I got there, that's the first thing that I saw, Reverend Brent Brown. That scared me to death. One sermon and all of a sudden I was a preacher. And I was thinking I have to preach a sermon every Sunday. And that concerned me. Well, I got through it. And the funny thing is the people there really enjoyed the sermons. And they spoke well of me. And that sort of went to my head. I really thought I was something. Not long after I was there, another church, Alcove United Methodist Church, was having a revival, and they asked me to preach one night at that revival. During the day, the day I was supposed to preach, a lot of phone calls came into the parsonage, and I never answered any of them. My wife answered them. But I stood afar off to where I could hear what the conversation was about. And every one of those phone calls were inquiring if I was going to preach at Alcove. That didn't help me much. It made me feel like I was somebody, like I was very important. It sort of gave me the big head. I remember and never will forget the night I was supposed to preach at Alcove United Methodist Church in Social Circle, Georgia. I got there, and when I walked into that, that church, it was three quarters full. And the pastor in charge said, we haven't had this many people in this church in a long time. And I thought, well, it's because of me. It's because of me. And I'll never forget that experience. It was a terrible experience, but it also was a good experience. The pastor in charge introduced me, and I got behind the pulpit, and I couldn't think of anything. Not one word would come out of my mouth. I remember saying two or three sentences, and I'm sure they didn't make sense, and I, I had a prayer, and I sat down. And the pastor in charge had to get up and preach because I couldn't. I remember driving from that church. I had to drive by the church that I was serving, Mount Pleasant Church. The road went right beside it. And I knew that at Mount Pleasant they were having vacation Bible school. And I just wanted to be by myself. I just wanted to slip by so nobody could see me. And as I was driving by, the kids were outside playing. And there were some adults out there. And one of them went... And I drove in, got out of the car, and they said, there's somebody here to see you. And I said, where are they at? They're in your office. They're here to see you. And they said, this person is different. And I said, what do you mean different? And they said, you'll see soon enough. Hmm. went into the office and there was this woman in there and she was dressed in all black she was painted her eyes were painted and she was sitting there with her head down and I walked in and introduced myself and I thought boy there's a, a feeling in this room. And I thought, boy, I would like to get out of here. And I told her who I was, and I asked her how I could help her. And she just cried. No, she wept. 
And she said, I feel such a burden. She said, I have done so many things that are evil. She said, I'm a Wiccan. I didn't know what that meant. But it didn't take me long to figure out that she was a witch. Scared me. And she said, I just, I just want to be forgiven for all the things that I've done. And she mentioned some of the things that she had done. But I'm not going to mention them here. And I remember saying, you know, I didn't have much experience of <laughs> at anything. But I remember saying that Jesus will forgive you. And she said, well, what do I do? And I said, just ask him. And she said it. She said it verbally right there. I can't explain, but I am a witness to this. Everything seemed to change. I can't explain it. I can't even talk about it clearly. Everything, the mood, the spirit, everything in that room changed. I just wanted to get out of there. And she got up and she left. And I, I thought, well, that's that. I don't really know what happened. I can't explain it, but that's that. The very next Sunday, I got up to preach and there was... There were people there, and I happened to look in the back row, and there she was. She didn't look the same, but there she was. And after, after I preached a sermon, they were singing the song, and I noticed she got out, and she walked up to the altar, and she knelt down. I knew enough about preaching that I needed to go and, and pray with her or talk with her or do something and I walked over to her and I knelt down. She said, I want to be baptized. I said, now? She said, no, I have a place and I will call you and give you the time. I remember that it was on a Saturday morning and it was in March and it, it was spitting snow and that was unusual in Georgia. I met her at a certain place. It was me and my wife, and she had a friend with her. And she said, we have to walk a ways. I said, okay. And we walked for an hour. And all of a sudden, we came up on a little, little creek. And she said, this is a place that I want to be baptized. I regret not asking her what was the symbolism of that place, but I didn't. There was just a little puddle of water and, and she bent down and I baptized her in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It was a special, special time in that place. And it was my first baptism. She became a member of Mount Pleasant United Methodist Church and she was there every Sunday. She taught Sunday school. She sang in the choir. She did everything. She was a joy to be around. I remember going to her house and she said, I'm gonna fix chicken. I don't like chicken. But I remember going to her house and eating chicken, me and my wife and her. And I remember falling asleep in her house on the sofa. She was just so easy to be around, such a joy. One night, about two or three o'clock, we were in the parsonage fast asleep. And the doorbell rang. Hmm. When the phone rings or the doorbell rings at two o'clock in the morning, it's never 
good. I went to the door and opened the door and there was this lady walked in and she was weeping. She said, I am Angela's sister. And she was just killed in a car wreck. That was on a Saturday night. And Sunday morning, I had to preach and tell people what had happened. She had become very important to that church. I preached her, her, her funeral in Covington, Georgia. It was the largest funeral I ever preached. A lot of people there looked quite different. Her life was a tremendous experience for me. It seemed like the Spirit of God came down and rested on her life. I can't explain it, but I am a witness of that. It's really hard to explain, and I really haven't done that well here and now. What happened? What happened to Jesus? He lived his life. He was crucified. He died. God raised him on the third day. He appeared to men. And then he led his disciples to a mount. And he blessed them. And he said, I will never leave you. He said, I won't leave you alone, that I will send help. I will send an advocate, a helper, that will testify of me, will bring truth into the world. Fifty days after that, 120 or so were gathered in one place. And all of a sudden, something happened. It's hard to explain. There were people there from all over the world. And they heard the good news, the good work that Jesus done. And each one understood it. And they were sort of pushed. They were sort of pushed and empowered by the spirit that came down to go into the world. And share the good news of Jesus Christ. Doesn't matter what you've done. You can pray that prayer. And he will forgive you. And that spirit that came down is still with us. Even until this day. I am a witness of that. Amen.